Hi, my name is Dr. Armin Kachatorin. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon and the founder of the Disc Replacement Center, and I practice in Salt Lake City, Utah. When I became interested in spine, you know, disc replacement was something that was, for me, incredibly interesting because I felt like so many of the treatments we were providing for the patients were involving fusion, and fusion provided relief of pain, but I felt like that, that pain relief came at a cost, which was loss of motion. So when it comes to MOBC, uh, again, I have uh, been involved with MOBC from the time and from 2006 when it was uh, part of the investigational study. And now that it's on the market, I've also been involved in, as far as implantation of other discs on the market. I feel that MOBC is what I would consider to be the next generation of, of disc replacements. Looking at the design itself, where it allowed for natural anatomic movement, so the device was designed in such a way that it would fit the patient's anatomy and allow for natural movement it became apparent very early on that MOBC was going to be a device that was easy to, uh, to uh, implant in a patient. There are no keel cuts to be made like other implants. There's no screws to be installed. Once you have the sizing down, the actual implantation is incredibly simple. It makes for a pleasant surgery. Once we completed the study and we got to the point where we looked at the data and now we have not only the two-year data that was presented to the FDA, but the four-year data that just became that was presented at, at, a, at, a, at a national spine meeting, we see that that bears itself out. That for a two-level study, we see lower reoperation rates in patients with disc replacement versus fusion. With MOBC having the FDA clearance for two-level indications, I think our job becomes a little bit easier. We can offer this to the patient with the data to back it up to say that for two level, for a disc replacement versus fusion, this study was able to show superiority. A patient of mine that we just did the surgery uh, literally about a month after the disc replacement became approved by the FDA uh, was one that came to us who's a school counselor and uh, what was uh, interesting and compelling about her story was the fact that her brother had had exact same problem and had received fusion about four months before she came to see us. When she came to us, she really was interested in knowing could she possibly have a disc replacement, and I thought she was a perfect disc replacement candidate. And she went on to have the disc replacement. So I saw her back about three weeks after the surgery, completely pain-free. She was moving her neck normally. We took some x-rays and we can see that MOBC was functioning the way it's supposed to. I mean, she was just delighted to have this uh, surgery that, uh, that she underwent compared to her brother, who four months after fusion was still having some neck pain, uh, as well as some restriction of movement. I can honestly say that I don't have a single cervical disc replacement patient that has not been happy with the results, both in terms of how quickly they can return to their normal life, how great the pain relief is. I, I truly believe in this technology. I believe it to the point where we're establishing the first disc replacement center uh, of its kind here in Utah. Uh, so uh, it is a technology that I believe in and I think it is uh, something that I can offer uh, to my patients uh, as a, a tremendous benefit. I can recommend the MOBC to uh, whether it be a patient or a surgeon out there who is interested in this uh, technology.